when you come to a complete stop i'm going to mention this again the air conditioner doesn't cold it's not cold at all on a hot day it's really annoying especially if you're in a lot of traffic or long stop lights that kind of thing um so basically what i do is i just kind of tap the accelerator and move like a as little forward as i can you know like let's say there's a, a car in front of me i just move a slightly forward by tapping the accelerator and it'll get the system the engine running again so it kind of defeats the whole purpose of that you know the idle stop and that's the whole reason why it has the 48 volt system with the uh, special starting system the starter it's actually like an alternator starter it's not even like a gear system it runs off of a belt and all these complexities and in the end they still have it to where the air conditioner doesn't even work uh it they should have like a heat pump or something you know like you know if you're gonna have that have it to where it can still run off of electricity and not require the engine to turn for the um you know for the climate control to work but anyways that's kind of the that's like one of the big deal breakers for me but it might not be an issue for you Uh, so I've been getting about 24 miles per gallon on average, which is doesn't seem all that great. Once again, the engine's off now. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. I'm not going to turn on, tap the accelerator right now. I don't want to scare anybody. There we go. Uh, for an eight-speed transmission, I'd say it's it's okay. Uh, it's not really spectacular or anything. Uh, it tries to sip gas, so you're not getting the high. When you're just kind of driving around, you don't really feel. Well, first of all, the R, when the RPMs are low, it, since it's a turbocharged engine, it's not going to have the greatest power. You get the get the RPMs high to get that that strong power, the full power of the engine, basically. Uh, so with a transmission that's trying to sip gas it, it keeps everything at low rpms and and soft so when you need that acceleration you have to change gears and all that stuff so there's a little bit of a a delay there but um but yeah it's not bad uh the the things that it is a fairly quiet vehicle and fairly smooth as far as the ride quality it's not annoying you know it's not like a a, a super soft suspension but it, it does feel good and you know driving around i enjoy driving it it's, it's no real problems with with driving it uh the lane keep assist system the, the air conditioning system and the lane keep assist uh, keep assist system are the two things that really have a problem so when i turn on the cruise control and the lane keep assist system fights with me the whole time also it tries to like shove me over on the oncoming lane sometimes so I'm, I'm like driving and then i'm fighting with it and i'll and then just when there's no car coming i just let go of the steering wheel to see what it's trying to get me to where it wants me to go and it like shoves me all the way half into the oncoming lane so yeah there, it doesn't always do that but especially if it's a curvy road so right now is a is a straight road so it'll probably work good but a, a road that has a lot of curves I'll just kind of let go of the steering wheel and see what it does so yeah on a straight road like this it's usually pretty good it, it still want, wants to wander a lot and it doesn't have a grip sensor so right now it's keep, keep telling me to keep holding the steering wheel but it doesn't have a grip sensor so you have to have a slight turn of the steering wheel in order for it to know that you're holding the steering wheel but it's very sensitive so it normally does a pretty good job as long as you're holding the steering wheel uh, some vehicles you're constantly like you can hold the steering wheel all you want and it still thinks you're not holding it and you have to constantly jiggle the steering wheel to get it to work but uh, this one is pretty sensitive so it, it can tell you're holding it most of the time i wish it had a grip sensor though that'd make it a little bit better but yeah a little bit of the turns like this with the with the lane keep assist system it just i don't know it just kind of fights with you and, and wants to wander all over the place and it kind of feels like there's a drunk person sitting in the passenger seat with the reaching over and holding the wheel for you and they're just kind of like wandering around <laughs> so yeah and i've had this problem with volvos most of the time uh so you can turn that feature off lane keep assist system if you want to 
it's not a huge deal, but it's an, it's worth mentioning, you know. Okay, so that was to the floor. And uh, so yeah, you can accelerate and you can get out margin traffic and all that stuff, not a problem. It's not really like fast or anything. And this, of course, since it has stepped acceleration, then you know, you're like, well, you gotta feel the, all the shifts and everything. And it, you have to rev a lot <laughs> because of the, uh, the turbocharger and a four cylinder and all that stuff. But you're able to drive it, no problem. And usually, you know, if you drive it normally, you don't have all that drama going on. It doesn't um, doesn't really have a problem. It's just when you really floor it, then, you know, as you saw, it's, it's a little dramatic. But yeah, it's, it's a really good highway vehicle, I would say. Uh, there's a certain positions that I would, that I sit in that this vehicle doesn't accommodate. Um, <laughs> but uh, I had, to, like I said, I had to play around with the seat position and, and get it comfortable but um but yeah it's if you want a wagon so the thing is about this vehicle is that there's so many other like S crossovers and suvs and stuff that are in this price range that are really good so it, it's really hard to compete with a wagon in that price range um so unless you specifically like the style and you want the wagon experience um you know the the, the you want the sitting on the floor experience instead of sitting more upright, you know. But um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting vehicle. I love the way the exterior looks. I really do like the way it looks. And Volvo has always pretty much impressed me with a lot of its styling, you know. It looks good. It's classy looking. It looks pre very presentable vehicle, you know. But a few design things could be improved, like almost every vehicle out there. Uh, there's some things that there's always room for improvement, basically. But overall, I like the vehicle. It's um, it's interesting because Volvo. It's like you're driving every Volvo that I've driven. It's it's basically the same thing. It has the same screen, same you know pretty much everything the same so this one is just the wagon version of all the other Volvos you know uh, you know you get into the XC90 you get into the um, you know and anything basically it's just like the same the same layout you know and and so if you like it you like it if you don't then you pretty much have to exclude all Volvo you know that's the thing but yeah let me know what you think in the comments about you know the Volvo and and, and what's going on with the um, the storage areas here like no place to put your cell phone and the um, you know the, the the simplicity of the buttons here on the steering wheel the screen which doesn't have that much customization and the, the Google based system which I've heard a lot, you know some people have some issues with let me know what you think about all these things if you have experience with a Volvo a modern one especially since they changed to the uh, the Google based system because before that, there was a different system, and you know it's it's basically completely different almost. But um, but how you use is different. The you know everything pretty basically different. But yeah, let me know if you have any experience with the Volvos, and if you like them, if you don't like them, whether you considered buying one or not. And I'll see you guys next time.